afternoon. It's been a hectic week both on the pitch and in the boardroom with a managerial merry-go-round going at a dizzying pace. Brian Little spun off, but John Gregory's quickly got on board. We'll hear from Villa's new boss. No one's quite sure if Steve Coppel's still on the ride. We'll speak to Crystal Palace's new owner, Mark Goldberg. Definitely out of Manchester United. We'll see how Barnsley ended their FA Cup aspirations. And we'll meet the man who's looking to do the same to United's ultimate ambition, Monaco's John Collins. We'll also introduce you to Everton's impressive young keeper, Thomas Myra, and Trevor joins me in the studio. And it's with Aston Villa that we start. After three and a bit not unsuccessful years in charge at the Midlands Club, Brian Little has resigned. Within a few hours of the resignation, Chairman Doug Ellis replaced him with Wickham Wanderers manager and former Villa man John Gregory. Following the story for us this week has been Gary Richardson. Brian Little came to us when he was 14, and I always remember the day we were about to sign him, his mum said to me, our Brian is a shy boy. He won't live away from home. I'm sorry he'll have to sign for Newcastle or Sunderland. I said, you can't do that, look. And she said, well, if it was our Alan, he'd go anywhere. I said, well, I'll tell you what, if I take Alan, can Brian come? Oh, she says, that would be marvellous. And that's how we signed Brian Little all those years ago. November 1994, and Villa chairman Doug Ellis was signing Brian Little again, this time as a manager. But three and a quarter years later, things hadn't worked out. Little decided to call it a day. There were certain things going on behind the scenes which were affecting my own managerial position. And as a result, my decision to resign was not taken lightly, and most definitely was not on the spur of the moment. It was done with the well-being of Aston Villa uppermost in my mind. Doug Ellis was told by Brian Little on Tuesday he was resigning, but that wasn't the first time. Ellis revealed that Little had tried to quit after the disappointing cup defeat by Coventry a fortnight ago. He was um, very down, as we all were, but um, we talked and uh, his immediate reaction was to resign immediately. And I uh, convinced him that he shouldn't. So he wanted to leave Aston Villa two weeks ago? Oh, yes. As you know, there have been suggestions that you pushed him out the door, that you sacked him. Absolute rubbish. Completely rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. Emphatically, a thousand percent. There is no question of my pushing him out of the door, interfering in any shape or form so far as the business of football is concerned. You didn't think about sacking him maybe next week or the week Never after? Never entered my head. Well. Never entered my head. Whatever happened. You were going to honour his contract? Without a question. Without a question. Of course I was honouring But it wasn't a question of honouring his contract. I wanted Brian Little to stay as our manager. And yet he said things were going on behind the scenes. What yeah. did he mean by that? Well, I, I can only ask you to ask him to tell you that. It's certainly, he he's assured me beyond that. I've been talking to him this morning, naturally. He said it's nothing to do with you. I will support you. That's Brian the impression said, he's given, isn't it? That it was something that you did. Well, that's for you journalists to get that impression. Uh, he's sad that it has, uh, that, that that's what it means. I think I know what it means. Uh, I know what it means, frankly. I won't say I think I know what it means. What is it? But I'm not going to tell you. It's well, why for not? him to tell you. It's for him to tell but you. But you see, that he's not doing any interviews at the moment, and you could clear it up now. So. No, I will not. As far as I'm concerned, Brian Little has his own reasons for resigning. Nothing to do with me. Anything further than that, I will not say. One of his quotes was, things happen and it stops you in your tracks. I mean, this is all mystifying, isn't it? Well, one of the reasons I think I can say is that he read something in that morning's newspapers, Tuesday morning's newspapers, one of which came from a great friend of his, which he just couldn't accept. You would have had heart-to-hearts with Brian when he said he wanted to go. In those conversations, do you feel then that the support he was getting from his players had anything to do with him going. Y you must have some idea on that. Well, as I'll only go so far as to say certain players. I'll leave it at that. You wouldn't name no, them at no, all? No, 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 I wouldn't name them, no, no. Obviously, he was at loggerheads with Savo Milosevic. Well, that's a matter for you to, de to determine, but determine it from Brian himself, not from me. Gray, and here's Gregory! Yes! 
Oh, he has every justification in turning to the crowd to accept the hero's welcome. John Gregory is the man in the hot seat now. He's moved from Wickham. A former Villa player, he also coached at the club. And that, says Doug Ellis, is a big plus point. He is being, as I see it, promoted from within, following the Liverpool pattern, which is a successful pattern. He's had 16 months away learning the trade, as you might say, in a lower, lower division as a manager. Prior to that, he had a year at Portsmouth, remember? So he has some background experience on management. <coughs> and uh, I know, know that the players will respond to John Gregory so far as particularly his coaching and his discipline. I'm very surprised that, uh, that Brian did what he did, to be honest, but that's him. Um, having worked with him for a long time and got to know him, uh, he's a stubborn man and um, once he makes up his mind to do something, he normally does it. Uh, there's been many occasions over the years we worked together when um, he's got sort of to the end of his tether and just one thing would have pushed him over and uh, he's always sort of been able to go home and sleep on something, come back in the next morning, but um, he obviously uh, made a decision on, uh, on Tuesday and uh, he stopped by it, you know. I'm fully aware that people were expecting a bigger name, a more experienced manager, but uh, in my opinion, you know, what, what are the credentials to be a big name, you know? Do you, uh, if someone's like a big showbiz personality and they, they're the ones that seem to get the jobs time after time. I mean, are you, are you an experienced manager of a big name if you've had the sack five times? You know, I mean, what, what does constitute being a big name as such? So? You're, you're obviously aware people are sort of saying, well, one minute he's a Wickham and now he's at Villa. He's, yeah. he's not the right bloke. What do you say to them? Um, uh, just give me, give me these 11 games. I mean, first and foremost, I mean, that's what I've been brought here to do, is, is to get us up. Um, I, I presume and I believe that uh, the club were, were left with a decision on uh, Tuesday afternoon at 3 o'clock that they didn't have a football manager. Um, had it been uh, the summer months when we had maybe two or three months before we needed to make a decision, I'm sure that then I wouldn't have been the man for the job. Um, um, I was available, uh, I was handy, I know the place inside out, I know all the players, I know the staff, I know everyone connected with Aston Villa Football Club, and I'm quite cheap. <laughs> what a way to start a match against Liverpool today, and then a, a big European Cup tie. I could have been playing against Gillingham though, you know. <laughs> I'm glad in many respects I haven't got four or five weeks to think about it. Um, it'll be here, you know, uh, very, very soon, and then of course we go to Madrid on Tuesday night for a UEFA Cup. I mean, I've got a buy in the first three rounds. I've gone straight to the quarter-final, so that's been, uh, that's been brilliant. Uh, but I just can't wait for Saturday just to, you know, get out here, get on, on with the job. And, of course, this place is going to be uh, full to the, to the brim and um, 40,000 people screaming their heads off in here. Uh, I hope that I can send 39,500 people on happy. Well, we wish you well. And um, those old jokes about villa managers, they write the name in chalk on the manager's door. That doesn't worry you? No, it doesn't, actually. And I, I know you're not allowed to call it a dugout. It, it's a trainer's bench. So uh, you just have to remember that. <laughs> Clearly has a good sense of humour. And Trevor, he might just need it in this job. This is probably <laughs> the deadliest dugout in the, in well, the league. It's, uh, you still have that feeling that Brian Little wouldn't have gone quite as quickly. I think he would have seen through the Madrid trip, the, you know, the UEFA Cup. Mm. It, it's a big tie, that, uh, which the season was resting on. Uh, something I just feel triggered, he, he went last week. Um, and then, of course, uh, yeah, John Gregory, in less than a day, he was, was in post. So that, that was very quick, although he had been there for a little while. I think John handled the, you know, the last few days very well. He wants to get out and get the Liverpool game. I played against him. He, you know, he's a very hard-working, good team mm. player. And I think that work ethos is, is going to be an interesting one, isn't it, with the, the likes of, of, of Savo and, and Stan Collymore. Well, which Brian are... Little clearly had problems with <laughs> those sort of players. That's a key issue that, that John Gregory has to address, isn't yes, it? Yes, I mean, he's, he's tried to play down the Stan Collymore situation, but, uh, you know, £7 million. Um, you know, he's got, what, five goals in 30-odd games. It, 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 you, know, you need another 10 goals from him. Oh, I think the problem with Stan, when he's struggling or when not playing well, he has that indifferent look, doesn't he, as if he's not that bothered. I'm sure he is, but he, he, he sort of, to the supporters, and even I think some team members, you know, they think, well, £7 million, you know, all, all the money must be earning, surely he should be charging around, putting himself about a bit, and he doesn't seem to be doing that. And I think, you know, when you think of John Gregory as a player, he, he's not going to put up with that for that long. But, of course, 
you know, if he's going to try and move him on, you know, leaves him in the reserves and thinks, well, I, I might sort of cash in him, who's going to buy him? You know, you're going to lose, well, I think at least half the £7 million. You've got all those wages tied up in him and you can't afford for the player to be sitting there for the next three years, you know, picking up his wages. But who's going to then take those wages? So it's, it's, it's a different, you know, Good difficult situation. area. Like Viali as well at Chelsea, he's really baptism of fire well, in the next couple of games. It could, it could help, or, you know, because you've got Liverpool first game, get a win, you know, at that because they need the points also, but then you're into Europe and he could suddenly get the, the supporters right behind him. All right, he hasn't got the name, but you've got to give him a chance like Chelsea, you know, supporters gave you earlier a chance. He won that game against Arsenal, that got him up and running really. But priority, staying up? Staying up has to be, yeah. yeah has to be. And you'll be able to see John Gregory's first game in charge at Villa Park on match of the day tonight. The other game is the one that's currently taking place at Stamford Bridge, where the latest score is Chelsea nil, Manchester United 1. Philip Neville's first goal for the club. Match of the day starts at 10.45 on BBC One. Then on Tuesday night, you can see John Gregory's second game in charge. Villa's first leg, UEFA Cup quarter-final against Atletico Madrid, live on BBC One at 8.25. Now it's all changed to at Crystal Palace. The new Selhurst...